Hi everybody. So these are all of the pens that I'm showcasing in today's video for a total of 14 pens. There is something new about each of these pens that I'm going to share. It's either a newly acquired pen, it's a new nib grind to an existing pen that I had, or I got some new ink that I put into this pen. All right, so first up is this beautiful combo right here. This Leonardo pen that I got at the Dutch Pen Show just really has my heart. It has a gold nib. It's just so beautiful. I got the rose gold trim. I actually chose the stub nib based on the body because I was looking through a few of the boxes at the show and I just fell in love with this in particular. It happened to have a stub nib on it. I have a variety of Leonardo pens, so I wasn't feeling too fussy about what I wanted. I knew I wanted probably a larger nib, like a medium or a broad or stub, um, just to show the ink, but look at this. It's just so beautiful. So in here, I have this gorgeous ink um, from a vendor out in the Netherlands. I talked about this in my haul. This is from a company called Journal This, and they make their own ink. And this is called Must Art. So let's get going here. So we're gonna do a little sample and then a little writing. I have a lot of pens to get to, so I'm gonna try to not be too chatty. Here we go. I'm gonna leave a little room because usually I write the month over here. I love this ink. I was kind of on a sepia mustard kick when I was in the Netherlands. I got a few colors that look a lot like this. It's absolutely beautiful. And it just pairs so well with this pen. Okay, love this so much. I'm next up. This combo could not be any more beautiful. This is my new Pelican M1000. I purchased this at Atlas Stationer. Look at this nib. It's magnificent. I just did a video on my Pelican flock before I added one more, which you're going to see later in this video. This is my M1000. I got this in a fine nib. It's a very bouncy nib. Many pelicans, they tend to write on the broader side and it is perfectly paired with this beautiful ink. It's a Ferris wheel press ink in collaboration with Wonder Pens. Put this over here. Oh, I had a feeling this was gonna look very dark because I got a very hefty sample here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lift some of that off of the page just using a little paper towel here. And you'll see how it, the color varies. It's just so beautiful, it's lovely. So I'm not sure if you were able to observe the bounce in there. Fine nib, 18 karat gold, and the ink is writing desk. And as that dries down, you can just see how beautiful it is with the light that this pen picks up. I have a lot of brown inks. I think a lot will look beautiful in here. I was just excited because this is a relatively new ink to me, so I wanted to give that a try. Okay, next up, let's look at this absolutely beautiful Pilot Decimo, it's the Nagasawa gradation. Um, they only had this available in a broad nib when I ordered it from Yoseka Stationery. Because I already owned these vanishing points, the Muse pen with green, and then of course the, the Pilot Whiskey, which was a Japan exclusive. This one I purchased with a medium nib, this one I purchased with a fine nib. So this one came with a broad nib. 
Um, even though the decimo and the vanishing point are different sizes, the nib unit is the same on all of these pens. So now I have a fine, a medium, and a broad, and I am loving the broad in here. I was a little apprehensive, but I really wanted the gold trim on this, and I am so happy with it. Uh, the ink that I ordered um, through Yoseka was also a Kobe ink. Hold on, I have a sample of it. All right, I'm very tempted to get a full bottle of this. Um, it is the Nagasawa Kobe ink in Coast Stone Gray. This is a five mil sample and it is number 31. This color is beautiful and I'm actually out of it in the pen. So I think I'm just gonna do a quick dip test for you. Um, but I will show you the ink in a larger swatch here. I love, love this ink. When it dries, I feel like there, you see a little bit of a lighter shade come through. I keep doing really dark samples here. So we're gonna do the same thing again and just dab a little. So you can see it lighten up a little bit. And then I am also going to dip this pen. Actually, I might just fill this up because I love this ink. This is the one downside are these converters, which I am not a fan of at all. But that is where my little blunt syringe comes in handy. I'm pull up a little bit here. This looks a little bit flat on this paper. This is a Lloydstrom notebook. I feel like I should be doing this on Tomoe River. It would look so much better. Um, it's looking really flat and that makes me so sad because it is not a flat gray. Anyway, I really love this combo. This pen is absolutely gorgeous and I haven't even done a full review on this pen or on my Leonardo Sugar Rush. Please let me know what you would like to see some full reviews on because I have so many pens to share with you. All right, so I have had this Monte Grappa pen for a while. This is the Monte Grappa Elmo. I'm not even sure what the color is on this. Um, but I know it's the Elmo 2. I'm pretty sure that I got this at Gold Spot. Uh, they were having a really good sale on it. I haven't really used this pen very much, and it's a fantastic writer. It's a medium nib, but I recently picked up Colorverse Wolf Point, which is a glistening ink. It's an Atlas exclusive, and it was on last chance, so I bought it, and it looks so pretty with this pen, so let me grab that. So here is Wolf Point. You can just tell it's gonna be a great match here. I love glistening even more than shimmer. It's like a fine shimmer. It's very pretty, pretty subtle as well. I really like it. All right, I'm gonna try not to get so much ink that you can't see any variation. Ah, oh, this is beautiful. This is so, so pretty. Love how this glistens. Isn't that gorgeous? Can't wait for that to dry down for you. This is an ink that I don't typically go for, like teals, but look at this. It is so beautiful and I'm really enjoying it in this pen. Medium. Okay, I just looked and I think this is called sea green. So that's what we're gonna write here. Okay, let's talk about this 
absolutely beautiful Estherbrook. I got this right before I took off to go to the Netherlands. This was a total impulse buy that I'm so, so happy I went for. This is a collaboration between Estherbrook and Bunga Box, which is a shop in Japan. This Estherbrook was under $200 and you got all the beauty of Bunga Box details. You have the little symbol on the nib here. This is just a steel nib. I have it in a double broad um, because that's all that was left when I ordered and then they restocked and there were a ton of other choices. So I will probably have this ground down to something when I go to Yoseka. This is one of the things I love about Bunga Box is that they always do these beautiful converters. I love the pink. I love that it's transparent, but so feminine and beautiful. I love that detail on the converter. It's absolutely gorgeous. So in here I have, what do I have? Twelfth Night by, um, this is another store exclusive at Atlas. It's really beautiful. This has more shimmer here as well. Um, but it was a nice pink that paired very nicely with this pen. Okay, here we go. It's still pretty dark. On this particular pen, you can see where all of the shimmer is getting caught up in the feed. So I don't know that I love this ink in this pen, but it's a really pretty legible pink. So this is the Bunga Box in Estherbrook Kachu Fugetsu Flower Pen, and it's a double broad steel nib. And this is by Waringal also. Am I spelling that right? Okay, this still has to dry. We're not really getting to see much of the shimmer, probably because I put too much down. Let's let it go. Let's see if it will drizzle a little bit more. There we go. Let's see what happens with that. Oh, now you can see the blue shimmer here. I'm making a mess. When am I going to learn my lesson? Make a little of that come together. Now we can see some of the shimmer a little bit better. It really is a pretty combo um, for this pen when you look at it together. This is a little bit more mauve-y, um, but it's a nice legible pink, which I enjoy. Okay, since we are talking about pinks, ugh, I love this Pink Champagne Bennu Euphoria, which is an exclusive with Gold Spot. This was gifted to me so generously from Tom over at Gold Spot, and it is such a fantastic writer. Have I ever been disappointed with the writing experience of a Bennu? I think not. I think my biggest disappointment was when I ordered a fine nib for my very first Bennu, the Iced Caramel Latte. I was very new to fountain pens and how they worked. I just wanted to see the ink more. But this broad pen, I love it. And I love that this is not like an in-your-face pink. Even though there are so many sparkles to this, it is just awesome. It's still, uh, that would look great with that ink too. Um, the ink that I have in here is a Pilot Iro Shizuku. This is Kosumuso and it is a really punchy bright pink and it's really fun. Um, but I actually think this might be a better match now that I'm looking at it right here. That's a gorgeous match and I wonder, I wonder what you think. I wonder if you would like prefer this in the Estherbrook pen or in here. Let's take a look. This is very bright.
So I think I got this pen at the end of May, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe it was June. I love it. Benu uses Schmidt nibs, which are out of Germany, and they are just fantastic. So like I said, this is a broad nib. Oh, so pretty. This is such a pretty pink. And you know me, I usually go for more neutrals, but this, is, this just makes me so happy, this combo. Yoroshizuku, Kosumosu. What do you think? Which is your preference? Sorry, my voice, the, the volume of my voice is probably changing because I keep standing and sitting. Do you like, oh, I really like it with the top color. Um, but here we have this. This is a very soft pink. I feel like if I really match that perfectly, like I have a Sakura ink from Japan, it's just much lighter. And then this has some pink in it too. And I think this would be fun with this ink as well. But I've been loving the, the more orangey tones to bring out this color. Oh, I'm having so much fun this month with my pens. <laughs> All right, what's up next? Let's see. All right, let's tone things down a little bit. Well, not really, because this pen is anything but subtle. But oh, I'm in love with this pen. This is a Scribo Ladata, and this is in Orifici. This was one of the last things that I purchased at the Dutch Pen Show. I bought this pre-owned and it is absolutely beautiful. The gentleman who I bought this off of actually takes photographs for Scribo. I love this chunk right here of the gold in the Orifici. And I love that there's a lot going on with the swirls, but yet it's still, it still has a, a classic vibe. This side of the pen, there's a party over on this side and it's a little bit more subtle over here, but I absolutely love this pen. This is a piston fill. It is a gold nib. And this is a broad flex nib. And in here, I have one of my favorite inks. It is um, Urban Coco de Brazil, which is one of those chameleon inks that I feel goes with so many pens. Let me grab it. I bought this ink a really long time ago and it's one that I just keep going back to. This is almost like a purplish grayish brown. It's just awesome. And oh God, I actually have used quite a bit. Now there's, now it's gonna get dark here. Um, oh, it's so beautiful. Love this ink. Look at how nicely that goes with this pen. Lift a little. I just love how this looks together. This is a really juicy nib. <laughs> wow. Okay, I just want to show you how much ink is going down here. You can see, you know, when you get the shine from the ink. Ooh, I just love that. Very juicy. Ooh, that's a skip there. You can really see how this has a lot of line variation when I do this because it is a flex nib. So let's do a little flexy here. Yeah, that's really incredible. I'm gonna pause. We have dinner planned, so I tried to get in as much as we could. I will be back and we will finish. The lighting might be a little different, but I have a lot more pens to get to. Hi everybody, welcome back. We are here about 24 hours since yesterday, just reflecting on these beautiful colors now that everything is dried. 
I'm not sure how the lighting has changed or anything, but we are gonna pick right up where we left off. And the next pen that I want to highlight is not a new pen, but I have a relatively new ink in here. I recently ordered Tuna and Olives, which is a dominant industry exclusive at Wonder Pens out of Canada. And it's a beautiful olive color, and I think it looks incredible with this finial. So we're gonna dive into that. I wanted to get Graphon Faber-Castell Olive. Um, it was on Last Chance at Atlas and it sold out before I got to it. And then I remembered that I had this beautiful olive color and that it was relatively new. So um, sometimes you just need to take a peek at your inventory to see what you have before going out. At least I do because I can be very impulsive when it comes to pens. Anybody else? Look at how beautiful this olive is. I feel like I don't I don't need another olive. Oh, they're so pretty. There's also a color called Olive Swirl that is really nice from the Diamine Ink Vent calendar. I believe it was 2022, and that one's really pretty as well. I love this color, and it looks so nice in my sailor. This is a medium nib that I got on this, um, and it's a really great match with that. is home. Really pretty. This is a great combo and I just think the ink is a beautiful match. Beautiful compliment, really. There are a few colors going on with this home pen. You have like the caramel center here, this kind of vanilla color on the body of the pen. This is transparent with a little ink in there with gold flecks. And then of course the finials and all of this is a very special pen. I love it. Look at me branching out, getting some variety in with my greens and blues and pinks, not just browns and tans and golds like I typically do. Okay, this is um, a new pen and I'll get into that and some brand new ink. This is Linen Toolbar Sesame Oil that I just picked up recently. It's one of my newest inks. I put it in this Sailor Pro Gear. Every rose has its thorn. Um, I got this pen from Jay back in April, and I don't know if I've shared this on this channel, but I shared on the Juicy Broads pen show that my dog Lumpy got to this pen, and he ate this part, crunched this, and this part. The nib was beautiful, the cap was in pristine condition, um, but I was trying to replace the body, and long story short, Atlas ended up replacing the entire pen for me free of charge. They just needed the old one sent back. I had initially reached out to try to get Sailor's information. They gave me Sailor's number. I reached out to Sailor. They told me to go back to my retailer. I went back to Atlas and they replaced it. They have a customer for life in me. Uh, so it makes this even more special. It was a special pen to begin with. Um, this has a medium fine nib with rose gold trim. And I just think that the um, the sesame oil is a nice neutral color that complements this. And it's really beautiful. So let's get that sample. This is right in my wheelhouse. This sesame oil, be no surprise to anybody. I love my neutrals and my browns. Um, and this is really pretty. So I have been putting some ink samples in here when I'm trying to compare colors. And I thought that this Lennon Toolbar um, Sesame Oil was going to look a lot like Ferris Wheel Press Oyster Hour. And I even put it up next to Sailor Studio 273. But on this Tomoe River paper, I mean, I cannot believe how pink this comes through. That's This is the pinkest this ink has ever looked. This is definitely darker than Oyster Hour. It definitely has a little bit more shading um, properties. 
and it does look a bit different on the Leuchtstrom. So you can see the difference. That is the same ink on top. Definitely leans more with the orange tones on the Leuchtstrom paper. I kind of wish I was doing my um, currently inked on Tomoya River because I think it shares the properties better, but it still looks beautiful on here. Um, but it, it does look very different. Um, but I wanted to show you the difference between this and Oyster Hour because initially I thought they looked pretty similar. And this sailor pen is a medium fine um, where my Sailor Pro Gear Yoseka is a medium nib. So you can see the difference. So 21 karat. I really love this combo. It actually looks really pretty on this paper and I love the way the rose gold goes with this ink. I just think it's a lovely combo. Earlier in the month, the ink that I put in initially was this lavender ink that I got um, when I was in London. And this is a scented ink. Um, so this is pretty as well. But I just was switching it up when I got the linen toolbar ink. And this is my new system for keeping track of my inks. This is actually a weekly, undated weekly from Sterling Ink. And it's in the A5. It's the undated planner. So this is the weekly view and what I do is I write the ink and then uh, the pen and the ink and then I kind of jot some notes down about how it's working and then I do an ink sample over here on the side and this is um, last week so that way when I look back I can see that this is in my every rose has its thorn pen and that is the the latest ink in there so that way I know like it's no, it's no longer this We'll see, the system seems to be working very well. And then in the month of June, these were all the inks that I bought while I was in London and at the Dutch Pen Show. I got my Pelican Cafe Creme in the mail on this date. These were the three new inks that I bought. You've seen um, Wolf Point and then Linen Toolbar. You're about to see um, the Garnet Red too. I got the Pelican M600 in red white for my anniversary that my husband bought me. So my anniversary was on the 25th. This arrived on the 29th. So these were some of my June acquisitions. You guys know this is no by July, but my birthday is coming up. There might be a pen for my birthday. So we will see. But that is Linen Toolbar sesame oil and since we were talking about the garnet red we can switch gears I'm so excited about this pelican I was really worried that it was going to be too small because I love my m800 and my new m1000 but the beauty of the m600 size in my opinion is I can write with it posted which I enjoy writing with my pens posted but as a practical matter I don't write with a lot of them posted because they're back heavy. And this is just a perfect size to write with posted. This is just a really beautiful pen. I've loved this red combo. My partner on the Juicy Broads, Vanessa, bought this a while ago and I've just been loving it from a distance. And then Atlas had it on last chance for 50% off and I just couldn't resist. So I got it with a broad nib. That's all that was left. But I am so excited about it because it is beautiful and juicy. So let me grab that ink. This is one of my favorite brands for ink, and I do really love the olive. I was so sad. Uh, this was also on last chance, so this was normally $32. I got it for $16, which is great because this is an expensive ink. This is more like on the oxblood tone, which is a little bit more burgundy than the barrel of this pen, but I think it really translates nice coming out of the pen. So maybe the ink sample won't be exact, but um, as a writing sample, it's beautiful. So you can see it has kind of some of the wine color to it. It's not as saturated as an ox blood or like um, writer's blood. It's a really pretty color. 
This was literally one of the only Faber-Castell inks available. They also had hazelnut, which I was thinking about getting, but they all sold out so quickly. But this worked out because I got it with this pen and I think it's really beautiful. I love ink bottles. I'm just not a big samples girl. I should be, it would save me some money, <laughs> but I just love the way the bottles look. This nib is just gorgeous. I believe this is a 14 karat gold nib, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong. I just love it. I really think that this is a great match when you just look at it, the writing sample. It's beautiful. So sometimes your ink swatch looks very different. Like I initially was thinking I was gonna go for a more red red, like my nails. I also tried a bunch of different reds as well. I've been really enjoying just comparing inks. At first I had this inked up with Cardinal Red and then when I got the Graphon Faber-Castell, I switched it up. But it's really fun to see all the differences in reds. Even this Passion Red I thought was going to be a good color, but it was actually a little light, a little too bright. I love kind of the dark edging around this Diamine Cardinal. A lot of reds in the um, Diamine Ink Vent calendars. Let's move on to my Mont Blanc 149. Now, this pen has made quite a few appearances in my Currently Inked, but what's special about this right now is that I had a custom grind um, done on this pen when I was in the Netherlands. There was a gentleman by the name of Philip who did this custom grind for me, and it was so great to get to know him in the Netherlands. He was there with his fiance and he has his own business. He's out of Germany. I will write the name of his business here on the screen because I think it's his last name and I'm not sure what that is right now. Sorry, Philip. So he used to work at Mont Blanc, which I thought was really cool. So when I was deciding which pens were gonna be worked on, I thought it was perfect that Philip could work on this because he was at Mont Blanc for, I believe, 10 years. This was an extra fine nib. I bought this at the Orlando Pen Show. It's a vintage Mont Blanc 149. It has the split ebonite feed in the back and a tri-colored nib in 18 karat. I absolutely love this. It's from, I believe, like probably 1990, 91, 92. And I purchased this from my friend Sid, who I met in Orlando, who restores Mont Blanc. So I absolutely love this pen. I bought a second one, actually, with a medium nib. It has a plastic feed. It's a little bit of a different era, a little bit more modern than this one. Um, so I wanted to have a custom grind done on this because I realized I liked the broader nibs. He did a cursive italic on here, uh, but you know, he didn't have much tipping to work with. And he observed that I kind of tilt to the right when I write. So he made some adjustments based on my, the way that I held my pen. So here we are. And I put this with Romeo and Juliet, which is a really pretty blue um, from Robert Oster. So this is the combo. So what's new about this is the custom grind. This is a really pretty blue. I love it. And it has like a little, I wanna say it has like a little pink underneath. When you see it dry, it's beautiful. This is such a nice writer. He opened the tines a little bit, so it's a, it's, it's a juicier writer now. It's just fantastic. I wish I had a sample of what this pen used to look like prior to the custom grind, but you get a lot more variation. And then you can really see when I do this, how much thinner my horizontal lines are when compared to the vertical. It's just so nice. Philip did a great job on this and I just love it. 
Okay, I wanted to feature this pen. This pen just has really surprised me. Um, this is a vac filler from Narwhal or Navalar, however you want to say it. This is a gold spot exclusive and it's called Rainbow Rass. I don't have any nibs that are beautiful and interesting and colorful like this. So I love this. I love that it's a vac filler and it's a transparent body. It kind of reminds me of a Twisby, but it, it honestly, it's a little bit more substantial. Um, and I love my Twisbees recently, especially I've been loving them, but I just think that you get a lot of bang for your buck with this particular model. I think I have a medium nib on this. It's a steel nib. I paired it with Tranquility from Diamine Ink Vent Calendar. And this is just such an incredible writer. I'm really impressed with this. And I love all the sparkle. It's almost a little frosted. It's really pretty. And I love all the details. And another thing that I love about Navalar is they have in-house nibs. So they make their own nibs. Their Nautilus model is made out of ebonite. I, I really feel like they're an underrated company. This was such a treat. This was also gifted to me from Goldspot. So thank you to Goldspot. I love this pen so much. So let's give this a whirl. I love these little ink vent colors. They're just fun. They, I branch out with these colors. It's a beautiful purple. Looks like grape soda to me. I love it. This is a really underrated pen for under $70. I just think it's fantastic. Here it is next to a Twisby, just in case you're curious. It's a larger nib, a little wider shoulders. The Twisby is um, piston fill. This is a vac fill. Both great pens. Um, this just feels a little bit more substantial, but I do love my Twisbees. How many inks is that? It's four, eight, 12. I think I have a few more because I'm extra. This is a pen that I got from a maker in the Netherlands. So you saw this in my Netherlands haul. This is from the brand Scopus. I love this pen. This is from his Van Gogh series and there are dried flowers in this resin. I don't have any pens that look like this. It's so beautiful. He made this one specifically for the Dutch pen show because the color was pink. Um, I love the, uh, the Scopus logo there on the finial. I love that this is like a matte finish section. I've said this before too. My only beef is <laughs> that all of the accents are in silver and the nib, well, this is a medium nib, but it's in gold. And I wish, I wish it matched the rest of the pen, but it's such a gorgeous writer. I just love the shape of this pen. It's a, it's a cartridge converter fill. Um, it came with that. Oh boy, I might be low on ink here. This could be a problem. So I think I had Ackerman in here. So let me just double check. Okay, P.W. Ackerman was one of the sponsors at the Dutch Pen Show, and they have this really classic design bottle, and so I had to get an ink. Um, but of course, the ink that I bought is very similar to the ink that is in right here with journalists. And then I also bought a sepia ink, and all three of them, the sepia ink I bought in London, and all of them look very similar. I was definitely in this zone while I was in Europe. I was really enjoying these like brownish mustardy colors. First, let's do a little sample. This bottle is so beautiful. It has like a, a ball in there that kind of keeps the ink up here. Let's do, you can, this has a little bit more orange in it. Get some ink in here. Such a cool bottle. 
I question the amount of ink that I bought in the Netherlands when I was traveling home, but it all, it all traveled quite well. I was grateful. I really love this pen. It's so pretty. Doesn't that look nice too? I think it's a Yovo nib too. Scopus. There's a number on this. P J E S R U I N. This is feeling like a little bit darker. This is a gorgeous fall color. And I love that you can see some shading in this when you write. That's the Ackerman ink. Actually, it is pretty different if you see the two. That one's definitely more mustard than this. That makes me feel better. <laughs> All right, I think this may be the last combo. So this Pelican came in uh, days before the Renaissance Brown M1000 came in. I may not have ordered this if I knew this was going to be coming out and I, I ordered this separately. This pen was re-released, Lumpy's Barking, so I'm not gonna spend too much time talking. <laughs> I inked this with Robert Louis Stevenson ink from Mont Blanc. I'm going to turn down the volume and write. Oh. Oh. Okay, I had to throw Lumpy's toy. Um, so here it is, this is Robert Louis Stevenson. This is an extra fine steel nib. And I, I felt like I was using a lot of browns. Um, so I, I branched out a little bit because this definitely leans towards the golds. I do like this um, Robert Louis Stevenson. I love my Mont Blanc inks. So that is everything. Um, these are all of my new inks, new nib grinds, new pens. I think I said this earlier, but let me know which pen you would really like to see an up close review on. I feel like I'm overdue with some, but I feel like I have a nice variety of color. I'm really enjoying my new ink log over here. It's really helping me keep track of things and lets me know just visually how much I'm bringing into my home. June was June was a very big acquisition month, so July has been much more modest so far. <laughs> it's only July 6th now, but still. This is my Leonardo Memento Zero. This is Sugar Rush with Must Art, which is absolutely beautiful. I have my Pelican M1000 in Renaissance Brown, such a stunning pen. And I have that right now with Ferris Wheel Press and Wonder Pen's Writing Desk. My Pilot Decimo, I brought downstairs because I was using it, so I don't have that here. Here is my Monte Grappa Elmo in Sea Green with this beautiful, this is like such a fun color, that glistening, Colorverse Atlas Wolf Point. And I do want to point out, because you'll see more of the glisten in here, this is what it looks like on Tomoe River. You can see the difference between the two. It's much flatter here. In general, you see so much better. I think I need to start doing my currently inks on this paper, but I want to show you the difference. Although this showed up really nicely. This is Bungle Box and Esterbrook. Kache Fugatsu, am I saying that right? This ink is really pretty. Uh, that's Wearing Gold and Atlas Twelfth Night. One of my favorite writers is this Banu Euphoria in Pink Champagne. This is Gold Spot exclusive. I got this with a broad nib, and that is with my pilot Iroshizuku Kosumusu, which is a really fun, punchy pink, and that has some nice shading to it as well. I feel like this didn't do it justice. This is my um, Urban uh, Coco de Brasil, which I love this ink, but again, it looks pretty flat there. You can see a little bit more of the shading on Tomoe River as opposed to this. It's a really beautiful ink, uh, a bit of a chameleon ink, I would say as well. And I have that in my absolutely beautiful Scribo Orifici with a 14 karat gold broad flex nib. 
I love this pen so much. Next up is my Sailor Pro Gear uh, Yoseka Exclusive, the Home Pen. This is with a 21 karat medium gold nib, and I have Dominant Industry Tuna and Olives, which I think is a great olive color. And staying with my Pro Gear, this is just such a pretty combo. This is one of my favorite combos this month. Sailor Pro Gear, Every Rose Has Its Thorn, second time around, keeping this far from my dog in a medium fine gold nib, 21 karat with linen toolbar, um, sesame oil, very pretty. Oh, I just smudged that, whoops. This almost looks like a black red here, that garnet red, but it comes out so nicely. So I really love this combo with my Pelican M600. Love that I can post this. Love the juicy broad nib on this. Just so happy with all of my Pelican pens. Um, I had quite an influx of Pelicans this month. My vintage Mont Blanc. Oh boy, do I love this so much since I had this custom grind done by Philip in the Netherlands. Isn't that beautiful? This Robert Oster um, Romeo and Juliet. Let me just show it to you here because I think you can see a little bit of the pink in here. Very, very subtle, but so pretty. So beautiful. I'm loving this and I love the way this writes. Mont Blanc 149s, they never get old. And then a very affordable, budget friendly Navilar Original Plus in Rainbow Rass with Diamine Tranquility. It's a really beautiful combo, really underrated pen. Also a Gold Spot exclusive. And then my Scopus pen, this Van Gogh. Uh, with a steel nib. Very unique pen. I love it so much. This is just so pretty, like nothing else that I own. I love the shape of this, and that, of course, is with the P.W. Ackerman 22 Hap Jess Bruin. <laughs> Somebody correct me. Number 22. That's what I'm going to call it. And last but not least, of course, is my Pelican M200 Special Edition 2015 Cafe Crema with an extra fine steel nib. I wanted to try out the extra fine because Pelicans write so broad. Those are my currently inked. You know me, I have others inked, but I just wanted to showcase these this month. My new pens, uh, let me know your favorite combo or let me know a combination that you're using right now that you love. I hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry if it was a little bit long. I have a hard time limiting myself with my pens. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. I'll be back soon with another video. Take care, bye-bye.